sports are, are now operating in a in a society that's diverse and so the 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 people who are leading who are running sport must reflect the communities that they are trying to serve so it becomes so important that the composition of that leadership group um, is sufficiently diverse that it has uh, an ability to understand the community that it's leading and tap into um, various types of thinking that exist within that community as it as it goes forward and makes decisions one of the the great movements forward for cricket um, in recent years has been uh, to front up to the fact that we had uh, depowered females within cricket primarily from not including them in the, the governance of cricket and so for the last five years we have set out to right that wrong and um, have made tremendous progress. We've, we've lifted the, the number of female directors from an average of about 6% five years ago to somewhere between 40 and 50% now. So there is genuine equity within governance and cricket. One thing that we have learned along the way is that creating gender diversity in itself is not sufficient. We also have to concentrate on um, ensuring genuine inclusivity. And the reason for that is that um, if we had significantly increased the number of females involved in cricket governance, and those females had walked into governance environments across our various cricket associations and had found the environment that they were operating within to be something that they just hated, that it repelled them, and or which didn't enable them to use their own skills and experience, then the whole push towards gender equity and cricket governance would have been a waste of time. So the penny on that dropped with us about two to three years ago. And so for the last uh, period of time, we have combined um, trying to continue to increase the diversity on our, within cricket governance, but at the same time as females have come into cricket governance is to uh, change the environment within our governance organisations to ensure that they felt uh, welcomed, embraced and genuinely able to use uh, all of their skills and experience, not just for um, topics like women's cricket, but for the governance of the whole of cricket. Uh, and as we have uh, been able to unlock that, that richness of experience and skills that has been coming into our governance, we have found that um, our whole of our governance has improved out of sight. Um, and that has been reflected then in um, the types of decisions that we've made and the types of activities that we have found ourselves in getting involved in. For this type of uh, movement to succeed, it needs um, a really strong group of male champions. And the reason for that is at the moment, um, in general, in a lot of sports, uh, as is still the same in the corporate environment, uh, most of the decision makers are still males. So uh, unless there is a solid core of males who are prepared to champion um, the movement towards diversity um, and inclusion with that, then um, those those decision makers who were resisting that movement could could stymie progress. Whereas if there are a sufficient uh, depth of male leaders who are prepared to ensure that organisations make the right sort of decisions to encourage continued growth of um, diversity, um, then the the movement itself uh, goes much quicker and is able to embed itself much more easily.
One of the challenges that those who are promoting uh, gender diversity face is that uh, because of the passion that they bring to the movement, one of the risks is that they fail to engage uh, with males and send a really clear message that males are invited to be part of this movement and are welcomed as part of that. So uh, a lot of care has to be taken to make sure that the invitation to uh, join in the movement is one that is being offered both to females and to males. And it, it, it's a little bit almost the reverse of what um, the problem that is trying to be solved is, is that males themselves become uh, a little bit uncertain as to whether or not they should join in this movement or how they should participate in the movement. And, you know, one of the, one of the, the reasons why I chose to um, put my hand up for being on the board of Women in Sport Aotearoa was because I had spent so much of my life in a majority situation that I really wanted to find out what it was like um, to be in a minority situation and um, to learn how to behave and cope with that environment and um, to use the opportunity there to uh, help those great people that are involved with WISPA to see that um, if they are going to succeed, they need males as much as they need females involved. Um, it, it isn't something that is uh, necessarily easily understood unless it is put out there and talked about. Um, because males themselves will be reluctant to do that. Uh, and so it takes good leadership um, to actually realise that, that that's an important component of the movement succeeding and to promote that. Whisper itself is, is realising that and I think as we move forward as an organisation and as a movement, um, we will be looking to promote um, male champions of change within the movement uh, because we know that'll be uh, one of the keys for the movement succeeding.